Hello everyone. Welcome to Achievers and AS classes. Let's begin our discussion on the current events of 19th Feb 2018. The first issue in news is the Kajuraho Dance Festival to be held by the Madhya Pradesh government. The week-long Kajuraho Dance Festival will showcase classical dances of India like Kathak, Odishi, Kathak Kali, etc. Along with this, in the recent times, modern Indian contemporary dance forms have also been added to the festival to showcase the diversity in dance forms. A point to remember from the film's perspective is the temples at Kajuraho, where this dance festival is to be held, was built by the Chandela dynasty between 950 to 1050 AD and are known worldwide for their erotic sculptures. Now let's move on to the next issue, which is regarding the recent question raised by the Supreme Court whether advocates chambers in the prime spots within the Supreme Court complex constitute heritable property for the children of practicing lawyers, senior advocates and judges. The Supreme Court last year had issued a notice in this regard that allotments would be based on the minimum number of appearances of the lawyer as well as on his or her seniority. But the current practice is that if an allotty advocate of a prize chamber dies, his or her child or spouse inherits one half of the chamber with the only criteria that he or she should be a lawyer. This violates the principle of level playing field for professional advocates thereby violating their rights under Article 14 that is right to equality and Article 19 of the Indian Constitution. Having said that, let's move on to the next issue which is an editorial regarding judicially inspired electoral reforms. The Supreme Court has recently imposed an additional disclosure norm for candidates contesting elections to include the sources of their income as well as their spouses and their dependents. The court has also asked for the establishment of a permanent mechanism to investigate into any unexplained or disproportionate increase in the assets of legislators during their tenure. This verdict in essence adds to a long list of significant reforms brought in by the judiciary like the introduction of none of the above option in the voting machines, immediate disqualification of convicted legislators, etc. The court has further cited that the act of voting is an expression of free speech and a fundamental right of the citizens. Therefore, the candidates contesting elections should furnish details of any criminal antecedents, educational qualifications and assets possessed by them. The court has also made it clear that any non-disclosure of assets and their sources would amount to corrupt practice under Section 123 of the Representation of People Act, which might lead to the disqualification of the legislator. Going forward, the Center and the Election Commission will have to jointly address the idea of setting up a permanent mechanism to collect data about the assets of a legislator and periodically examine them in order to ensure a fully informed electorate and a transparent candidature in the future elections of India. With that, let's move on to the next issue in news, which is the huge 11,500 crore rupee scam of the Punjab National Bank, which is a result of the failure of both internal and external auditing, who apparently did not check the swift messaging records, which offers for quick and secure communication between banks for international wire transfers. Also, income tax officials have detected several irregularities indicating the role of shell companies in the movement of funds. For further details on the issue, please go back and watch my previous news analysis video. The next issue in news is an editorial which is talking about why India should prioritize its relations with South Asia and the many challenges it faces in the region. According to the author, India's importance in the global landscape is growing by the day which was also demonstrated recently by the presence of 10 leaders of the ASEAN community in the, the Republic Day celebrations of India. This was followed by the visit of Israeli Prime Minister to India and the Prime Minister of India visiting UAE, Oman and Palestine. In this regard, it can be said that India still possesses enough leeway to handle contentious issues in the West Asian region without having to take a stand that could adversely affect relations of India with these countries. But the same is not the case with South Asia, which is India's immediate neighborhood and directly impacts it geopolitically, geostrategically, as well as geoeconomically. Therefore, 
India's principal focus should be on the neighborhood where troubles are seem to be mounting in the recent times. These include a new government in Nepal, prolonged unrest and possible violence in neighboring Bangladesh following the conviction of the leader of opposition in Bangladesh on corruption charges, the unfolding events in Maldives, which is a strategic part of Western Indian Ocean, occupying a crucial position along the main shipping lanes in the Indian Ocean, therefore an object of interest to the major powers in the region like the United States and China. Adding to this are two other very contentious issues relating to Pakistan and Afghanistan. While there are increasing incidences of cross-border firing and terrorist violence emanating from Pakistan, there is a complete collapse of the system of governance in Afghanistan. Both of them having severe consequences for India and the nations in the vicinity. Therefore, for India to achieve its aspirations of being a global power and a leading power in the region, its focus need to be on our immediate neighborhood because if India is not actively involved in ensuring that the region is at peace and functions in conformity with its worldview, any claims to the leadership of the region would not be of much significance. Having said that, I wrap up today's news analysis. Do share this content if you like it. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.